Hi, I'm Marty Grimes with Santa Clara Valley Water District. Welcome to this episode of The People Behind Your Water. And uh, this month we're actually going to be talking to some companies, local companies that have been doing a great job with water conservation. And uh, I didn't get to go out and talk to them, or my colleague, Ricardo Barajas, did. And Ricardo, uh, you, you spent a couple days talking to two companies. Who are they and, and what did what you find out? We actually uh, went to go talk to Cinnabar Hills Golf Course, which is actually changing the way they water their lawn. And as you know, at a golf course, you know, it has to be nice, green, and pristine. Well, we are in a drought. And with June 2014 being the hottest month on record since 1880, um, we all have to do our part in order to conserve water. And so Cinnabar Hills did just that, and they're conserving water, so we're going to visit them. And uh, we did visit them, and uh, Google Campus uh, did their part as well, and you might have heard of them in Mountain View and yes, uh, yes, the Google Plex. Yes, the Google Plex, that is exactly what they call it. Um, they've changed everything from their water um, shower heads to uh, their washers are very water efficient and um, everything in between exactly just like Santa Barbara Hills with their um, landscaping. Uh, so they re reduced that and they have some cool technology that they showed us on uh, how to conserve water. So, All right, well stay tuned and hear how two companies are saving water in this exceptional drought. Hi, today we're here at Cinnabar Hills and we have a couple of gentlemen who are going to be telling us exactly what Cinnabar Hills is doing uh, in order to conserve water during this drought. Um, we'll start off by introducing Ron. Ron. Hi, I'm Ron Zurake. I'm the general manager of Cinnabar Hills Golf Club. Thank you. Uh, Brian Boyer, superintendent of Cinnabar Hills Golf Club. Great. So uh, California is going through a big drought and we want to come and check out what Cinnabar Hills is doing. Uh, to conserve water. They've done th things here and uh, inside their clubhouse. And Ron's going to tell us a little bit about what are we doing exactly here at this golf course that is uh, helping conserve water for Santa Clara County. Well, first of all, thanks for coming out and visiting us. Uh, we take this uh, water conservation very seriously. Uh, since the first of the year, we've uh, conserved approximately 23% uh, compared to year to date last year. Um, most of that has been out on the golf course. As you can see behind us, we have our driving range and we've stopped watering the driving range. Uh, uh, landing area entirely. In other areas of the golf course, we have cut water dramatically. In some areas, we've eliminated water uh, in its entirety. And in other areas, we've cut back somewhat and balanced it all out to save 23%. Brian Boyer, our superintendent, uh, does a great job managing um, the irrigation system that he has in order to conserve the water out on the golf course. And we'll go out to some areas and show you where we've cut water on the course itself. So Brian, I see a couple of brown patches here and there. Can you explain to me exactly how you go about, do you manipulate the way you uh, water the fields? How, what exactly do you do? Well, here on the driving range, we turned it off completely. Uh, on the golf course, though, we're not this dramatic. We've switched to deep and infrequent watering versus a little bit every night. Uh, we've determined out of play areas and turned those down. And we've gone through continually auditing our system to make sure everything is running as efficiently as possible. All right, so next we're going to go check out a couple of the spots here at Cinnabar Hills, uh, so stay tuned. All right, we're out here at one of the locations here at Cinnabar Hills, and uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about um, what's this location exactly and what are we doing to conserve water here. Yeah, right now we're on Three Lake, and this is one of our longer par fours, and as you can see behind us, We've cut out the first 50 yards, what we consider a flyover area or an area that's not particularly used as much as the, the rest of the area. And this area is cut down 50% in some cases zero. Oh, wow. And so overall on the whole golf course, um, how much water conservation percentage-wise have, uh, have you actually done? 
Uh, year to day, we're almost 24%. And for the month of August, which was one of our hotter months, we were 21.5%. Okay. To last year. Okay. And um, so for here specifically, what exactly do you do in order to make sure that, you know, you're watering just uh, the um, specific areas? Um, I'm not an avid golfer, but I do see certain areas that are green and others that aren't. Um, is there a specific reason why? Absolutely. We use a computer system to run our, uh, all the sprinklers. We have over 2,000 sprinklers on the course, and each sprinkler can be individually controlled. And we turn the ones off that we don't think we need or turn them down a percentage for a certain period of time. Okay, great. That's really good to know. Um, we're going to stop by another location and see um, how the drought is actually affecting uh, Cinnabar Hills. Yeah, we're here on Five Mountain, and the beginning area where it's brown is a flyover area that we described earlier, and it's it's off. And to the left, which is a somewhat used area, it's down 40%, which we've done throughout the golf course. Okay, great. And um, I'm wondering, are you hearing any feedback from your customers? You know, they come out here, you expect a green golf course, and they come out here and they see some brown patches. Um, are, is there concern? Are they asking anything? Uh, the feedback from our customers has generally been been very, very good. We've always been a firm and fast golf course uh, ever since we've opened. Um, it's better for the turf. If the uh, grass isn't saturated, uh, the ball will roll further. Uh, it'll roll truer on the greens. And so um, we have taken that now to a different extreme, of course, with, with the cutback of the drought. But generally speaking, the um, feedback from our customers has been very, very positive. They're very supportive of our efforts and understand why we're doing what we're doing. Great. Um, we offer a variety of rebates um, for water conservation from residents like you and myself and even uh, companies and golf courses. Um, I, it's my understanding that you are pairing up with the water district and also offer, um, you're taking advantage of one of our programs. Is that correct? Yeah, we're looking into a drought conversion of turf grass, uh, maybe look at some barley or brome or some other plants that are listed on the uh, approved list of the district. And uh, we're in the process right now and we'll see what happens. And about how many uh, square feet are you looking at possibly converting? Um, Approximately 75,000 square feet. Okay, great. Yeah, any little drop counts. And so um, we're glad that Cinnabar Hills is here and they're doing their, their part to conserve water. We're back here now. We're actually at the clubhouse and we're going to be talking, uh, actually focusing on what water conservation is going on here at the clubhouse. And uh, can you explain to me a little bit more what we're doing here? Sure. Well, you can see right here in front, we've stopped uh, watering our uh, landscaping in the front of the clubhouse. We have table tents inside in our restaurant that uh, remind folks that if they want water served while they're eating to please ask. We only serve water on request. For the leftover water that we have, we have one of the district's blue buckets and some other receptacles in our kitchen where we're collecting that leftover water and using it on some of our other um, landscaped areas around the clubhouse. Uh, we're only washing our carts um, uh, once a day. Uh, we have a uh, web uh, a page on our website that talks about our water conservation efforts that link back to the water district's uh, website and we also have uh, what we call our commitment to conservation and community uh, posted around our clubhouse which explains to our customers um, what we're doing to conserve water. I I'd also like to take a minute to thank the district for A, coming out and talking to us, B, recognizing the things that we've done, and C, doing such a great job of making people aware of the seriousness of the drought and um, managing our water supply so effectively because if not, we'd have been in a lot, we would all be in a lot worse shape than we are. Yeah, I could see how, you know, washing a golf cart uh, once uh, a day in, or, or once every time it gets used, um, but instead of let's focus on just once a day instead of every single time, right. that in itself uh, can save vast amounts of water. So Well, we did go out on the golf course and earlier today, and that's where really the majority of the savings occur is um, reducing, the elimina uh, reducing the irrigation on the golf course. But every little bit we do around the clubhouse is visual for our customers and for our employees so that they know that we're doing everything we can and hopefully they can take some of those ideas home with them and use them at home. Great, thank you. All right, thanks so much.
Water conservation continues to be a way of life here in Santa Clara County, and uh, residents like yourself are doing your part, but also companies in Santa Clara County are doing their part. Um, today we're here with uh, at Google in Mountain View, where we're going to find out a little bit about what their goals and initiatives are as far as water conservation goes. So we're actually here with Drew, and Drew's going to tell us a little bit about that. So hi, Drew. Thank you for coming on the show. Great. Thanks for coming out and allowing us to share a bit of our campus with you today. So uh, water conservation has always been a real core value here at Google, years before there was really any threat of a drought. So, mm -hmm. And with all the amenities and different things we provide here, we have a real responsibility to make sure that our choices are really well thought out and reasoned so that when we implement them, uh, to our population here, they really have a big impact. So, And we also have the opportunity to educate our population here as well. So they can take the little things we might do here, the little positive nudges about what you might be able to do with your landscape or the laundry machine we pick, and they can take that home with them and have a bigger impact in their own community. Great, great. So we're here actually at one of your campus, and I'm seeing a lot of like landscaping that's here that's drought tolerant. Can you tell me a little bit about what this is? Was this actual turf before? Yeah, so this area here went through a transformation probably about a, a year ago where we had this beautiful center courtyard here. That was, it's a legacy property. This was built back, uh, you know, uh, back uh, by a, a previous company to, to Google. Sure. And it was just a giant turf lawn. And it was really water intensive. Mm -hmm. And second, it really didn't provide a great uh, habitat for a lot of the, the different animals and birds that are in the area. So we were able to, as part of our strategy here, go through and create an environment that utilized uh, bay-friendly plants, so natives from the area that were able to be not only drought resistant, but provided some great habitat. And it was great for our employees as well here because we have these kind of nice areas to kind of, you know, tuck away out of the area and recharge a bit in this uh, environment that is sustainable and beautiful. Google also wants its fellow Googlers to know um, a little bit about the drought and what they're doing uh, to conserve water. And so Drew's going to tell us a little about a campaign that's going on um, here at Google Complex. Yeah, so in addition to the physical changes we're able to make in our environment, we also knew that our one area of big impact would be educating Googlers so, so that they could also learn some tips and tricks, tricks and things about the drought. So internally, we got together with some of our partners and then on the uh, internal communications team and figured out a great way that we could share messages to Googlers. And it started in real low-fi ways, like writing messages on uh, bathroom mirrors, you know, saying like, hey, like, take shorter showers. Do you know how much a typical right. shower uses of water? And yeah. Uh, we've also done things like table tents in the cafes, just with simple facts and things that, that uh, people can take with them and maybe apply to their home life as well. So uh, everything points back to uh, a pretty robust internal site that we have uh, where Googlers can look at what we're doing here across the campus and educate themselves what they might be able to be able to do at home uh, so that we can not just change our physical environment, but also educate people as well. Right, yeah, part of the equation is definitely educating the public and letting them know about different things they can do at their home, at their workplace that could really conserve water. So it's really great to know that, you know, these simple messages that are out there on campus um, are being sunk, you know, they get sunk in and then they kind of realize it. Yeah, we, we uh, also, we're getting a lot of questions at first around like, hey, like, why is your grass so brown? So we were like, oh, missed opportunity. And we put up these big signs at key areas around the campus where we said, hey, why is the turf so brown with a question mark and put some facts about the drought and directed them towards those internal resources that share with them hey these are all the things we're doing and the landscape's not going to look the same because it's the right thing to do yeah it's definitely the responsibility of everybody really to take care of all of our precious water our resources that we have so it's good to know that uh, we're doing that especially here and, and educating your fellow googlers about that message so excellent much like you and I, we wash our clothes, um, hopefully not on a daily basis, but when we have a full load of clothes so that we're being a little bit more efficient when it comes to water. Here at Google, they also have washers and dryers. And um, what exactly, how many of these uh, washers do we have here on the campus? So we have about a dozen laundry facilities here across the campus. And this is one of the reasons why we really have to make smart choices as facility managers, because the amenities we provide to our employees could have a big impact. You know, a typical top-loading washing unit could consume as much as 40 to 50 gallons per load. So we really did a lot of research and found a, a tier three uh, a water rated uh, device here, which utilizes about 20 gallons per load. So 20 gallons per load spread across the, the many units we have here on campus and the many Googlers that generate uh, dirty clothing, uh, we can have a really big impact by selecting a smart, really efficient uh, unit here on campus.
Definitely. And do you know on average, like about how many loads of laundry kind of get washed around here? Do you have any statistics like that? You know, I would guess a lot of laundry, right. a lot of laundry. I can't quantify exactly how many loads uh, we generate here on site, but with a huge population of active Googlers that participate in many of our sports and fitness programs and, and work long hours here on site to deliver great Google products, we do a lot of laundry. And a lot of the washers seem like they're full load washers and they're already full of clothing, which is pretty good and we like to hear that. Um, stay tuned. We're here at what looks to be a Google Fitness Center and we're actually going to find out what are they doing here as far as water conservation goes. Drew, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So we have one of our larger uh, restroom shower facilities here as a part of this gym installation. So one of the reasons why we generated so much laundry you saw at our last stop. Right. So, uh, you know, we've got showers here on site and a typical shower head might use about 2.5 gallons per minute. So, and we thought we could do better. Mm -hmm. So we tested a number of different products here on site and actually put it out to a vote to our users and said, hey, what do you like? What works best? And we actually identified a shower head that uses 1.25 gallons and it got the thumbs up from our users. So now we've gone through and implemented those at all of our shower facilities here across the campus so that we can make sure we're using a product that people like and it really saves water. Additionally, you've got the standard other restroom components here. You've got urinals, you have bowls and whatnot. So uh, typically, uh, consumer grade, you know, you might see anywhere from like a, from like a, a gallon six on a high efficient model right. up to three gallons to an older model. Mm -hmm. And so we did a bunch of research there as well, tried a bunch of things in the field and actually found a urinal that can flush at 0.125 gallons or about a pint. Uh, additionally, we have bowls that now flush at uh, 1.28 gallons. So the, the most highest efficient model we found that also really gets the job done. So we're also testing some other uh, water-free technologies here on site so we can even reduce our footprint further. And we've tried various things. We're really narrowing in on kind of what works best for our environment and drives the biggest environmental impact. Great. It's great that you also f you focus on water conservation, but you also make sure that your users are happy with the with the end result, right? Exactly. There's got to be a balance, and if they're happy with the product that they see here on site, maybe they're then more apt to utilize a similar product at home, and then our impact extends beyond the campus. And people take that back to the community when they see, hey, that uh, low flow product right. really worked. Yeah. We're going to continue our tour here at uh, the Google campus, so stay tuned. There's a lot of landscaping going on here at the Google um, complex in Mountain View. And, you know, it wouldn't be Google if they weren't, you know, having some sort of technological advanced system in uh, trying to figure out where to irrigate and when to irrigate. So Drew's going to tell us a little bit about this um, hydro point system here that actually does something like that. Yeah, so this boring looking column here actually has a lot of really cool stuff going on inside of it. So this is an instance where Google's able to leverage some of the amazing advancements in technology that some of our some of the external partners in the water resource industry and the irrigation industry have put a lot of R&D into. And we just get to be the end user who gets to put it into action. So uh, our uh, landscaping company that we partner with here on site recommended this about uh, two years ago, saying that, hey, you know, there's a lot more we can do when it comes to irrigation and we can get really smart with the help of HydroPoint and the WeatherTrack system. So basically, this is a it's a, a networked controller. So we have these controllers that are at all of our own properties here throughout the Mountain View area and they tie back to a central weather track system that gets a daily download of weather information from Moffett Field just located right on the other side of a uh, just right over that away. Mm -hmm. So we get a local really granular view of the, of the weather in this area here. It's mm -hmm. going to tell us about average temperatures, what the sun conditions are like this time of year. We also have uh, hygrometers throughout the campus that'll let us know how, uh, how much moisture contents in the soil and all that feeds back into the hydropoint system here and then it optimizes our water use throughout the campus. It's also zoned so it knows if it's watering an area that's uh, that's grass or it's watering an area that might be trees that need different types of, uh, of watering conditions. So mm -hmm. and it takes that information and we're able to then apply parameters to that where we say all right this is what you think is the minimum to serve that area and we kind of purposely dial it back even more saying you know how lean can we go to be even more efficient and have that balance of supporting our environment, but being as lean with our water resources as possible. So it's pretty cool technology in a boring container. 
Yeah, so do you guys also have some sort of like drip irrigation and different types of irrigation systems? Or is it just one particular type? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, various irrigation solutions depending on the uh, the, the type of, uh, of plant material or the type of area that we're, that we're watering. So some of the uh, area you saw out front when we started our tour where we would transform turf into plantings, we'll do point to point irrigation in those locations. And then areas where we do still have turf, this turf happens to be uh, watered by recycled water, mm -hmm. we'll use rotor heads, which are really efficient. Compared to a typical spray head, the rotor head will use about 30% less, uh, less water. And you have less of the uh, atmospheric uh, right. loss with a rotor type head. Right. Okay. Um, is there anything else we should know about the landscaping? Is, it, uh, is the majority of it uh, through water through recycled water? Or? So it's a mix, and that, that's tough for, for customers that are really trying to, to have, be really sustainable. If they have access to recycled water, it's an amazing resource. But it's just not available for as many customers to really take advantage of it. So hopefully, through this environment here, where we're able to utilize recycled water, we can really show how it works, how it can be a part of your conservation strategy. And as it expands, other customers can hopefully follow our lead and other companies like us that have that resource and put it into play. And, water that was formerly not being utilized is now going to offset potable water consumption. Right. Well, it's great to know that Google is doing their part in conserving water and all their landscaping needs. Um, definitely, we all have to conserve water, and Google is no exception. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.